Hello guys, welcome to my channel. Today we discuss about the topic digestion and absorption. As we all know food is one of the basic requirements of living organisms, the major components of our food are carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins and minerals. The food provides us energy and organic materials for growth and repair of tissues. The water we take in also plays an important role in metabolic process and also prevents dehydration of body. Digestion is the process of conversion of complex food substances to simple absorbable forms. Biomacromolecules in food cannot be utilized by our body in their original form. So they have to be broken down and converted into simple substances in the digestive system. This process is called digestion. Absorption is the process by which the end products of digestion pass through the intestinal mucosa into the blood or lymph. Digestive System The gastrointestinal system or human digestive system consists of the alimentary canal that extends from mouth to anus. And the associated glands that empty their contents into the alimentary canal like salivary glands. The liver And the pancreas Functions of Digestive System 1. Nutritive Functions The functions of digestive system are to take in nutrients and water into the body and to eliminate wastes by the process of motility, secretion, digestion, absorption, and excretion. 2. Endocrine Functions Many hormones are produced by cells of gastrointestinal tract. 3. Role in Immunity Gastrointestinal tract is an important part of body's immune system. Intestine has very well developed innate and adaptive immune system, human digestive system. The mouth leads to the buccal cavity or oral cavity. The topic oral cavity will be discussed in next slide. The oral cavity leads into a short pharynx which is a common passage for food and air. The esophagus and the trachea which is also called as windpipe open into the pharynx. Epiglottis prevents the entry of food into the glottis during swallowing. Esophagus extends posteriorly passing through the neck, thorax, and diaphragm and leads to stomach, which is J-shaped. Gastroesophageal sphincter regulates the opening of esophagus into the stomach. The stomach is located in the upper left portion of the abdominal cavity. The stomach has three major parts. 1. Cardiac portion into which the esophagus opens. 2. Fundic region. 3. Pyloric portion which opens into the first part of the small intestine. Small intestine is distinguishable into three regions. 1. U-shaped duodenum. 2. Long coiled middle portion jejunum. 3. Highly coiled ileum. The opening of stomach into duodenum is guarded by the pyloric sphincter. Ilium opens into the large intestine. The large intestine consists of three parts. 1. Cecum. Which hosts some symbiotic microorganisms and the very form appendix arises from the cecum. 2. Colon. The colon is divided into three parts. An ascending, a transverse and a descending part. 3. Rectum. The descending part of colon opens into the rectum which opens out through the anus. Oral cavity or buccal cavity. The anterior opening mouth leads to the oral cavity of alimentary canal. The oral cavity has a number of teeth and a muscular tongue. Each tooth is embedded in a socket of jaw bone. This type of attachment is called thecodont. In majority of mammals including human beings a set of temporary milk or deciduous teeth replaced by a set of permanent or adult teeth. This type of dentition is called diphyodont. An adult human has 32 permanent teeth which are of four different types namely incisors, canine, premolar, and the molars. This type of dentition is called heterodont. Arrangement of teeth in each half of the upper and lower jaw in the order incisors, canine, premolar, molar, is represented by a dental formula which in human is 2. 1 2 3 by 2 1 2 3 the layers of alimentary canal the alimentary canal extends from mouth to anus 
The wall of alimentary canal from esophagus to rectum possess four layers namely. Serosa. Muscularis. Submucosa. And the mucosa. Serosa is the outermost layer and is made up of a thin mesothelium with some connective tissue. Muscularis is formed by smooth muscles usually arranged into an inner circular. And an outer longitudinal layer. An oblique muscle layer may be present in some regions. The submucosal layer is formed of loose connective tissues containing nerves, blood, and lymph vessels. In duodenum, glands are also present in submucosa. Mucosa is the innermost layer lining the lumen of alimentary canal. This layer forms irregular folds called rugae in the stomach, and small finger like foldings called villi in the small intestine. Mucosal epithelium has goblet cells which secrete mucus that help in lubrication. Mucosa also forms glands in the stomach and encrypts in between the bases of villi in the intestine. All the four layers show modifications in different parts of the alimentary canal. The mucosa layer forms small finger-like foldings called villi in the small intestine. The cells lining the villi produce numerous microvilli which gives a brush border appearance. These modifications increase the surface area enormously. Villi are supplied with network of capillaries and a large lymph vessel called the lacteal. Mucosal layer forms crypts of Lieberkuhn in between the bases of villi in the intestine. Digestive glands The digestive glands associated with the alimentary canal include 1. Salivary glands Saliva is mainly produced by three pairs of salivary glands, the parotids the submaxillary or submandibular and the sublinguals. These glands situated just outside the buccal cavity secrete salivary juice into the buccal cavity. 2. Liver Liver is the largest gland of body weighing about 1.2 to 1.5 kilograms. It is situated in the abdominal cavity, just below the diaphragm and has two lobes. The hepatic lobules are the structural and the functional units of liver containing hepatic cells arranged in the form of cords. Each lobule is covered by the glycines capsule which is a thin connective tissue sheath. The bile secreted by the hepatic cells passes through the hepatic ducts and is stored and concentrated in gallbladder. The duct of gallbladder along with the hepatic duct from the liver forms the common bile duct. The bike duct and the pancreatic duct open together into the duodenum as the common hepatopancreatic duct which guarded by sphincter of Adi. Next is pancreas. The pancreas is compound which is both exocrine and endocrine organs situated between the limbs of the duodenum. The exocrine portion secretes an alkaline pancreatic juice containing enzymes. And the endocrine portion secretes hormones insulin and glucagon. Digestion of food. The process of digestion is accomplished by mechanical and chemical processes. The buccal cavity performs two major functions mastication of food and facilitation of swallowing. The teeth and the tongue with the help of saliva masticate and mix up the food thoroughly. Mucus in saliva helps in lubricating and adhering the masticated food particles into a bolus. The bolus is then conveyed into the pharynx by swallowing or deglutition. Then it further passes down through the esophagus by peristalsis. The gastroesophageal sphincter controls the passage of food into the stomach. The saliva secreted into the oral cavity contains electrolytes Na+, K+, Cl, HCO3 and the enzymes, salivary amylase, and the lysozyme. The chemical process of digestion is initiated in the oral cavity. About 30% of starch is hydrolysed by the enzyme salivary amylase at optimum pH of 6.8 into a disaccharide, maltose. Lysozyme present in the saliva acts as an antibacterial agent that prevent infections. The mucosa of stomach has gastric glands. Gastric glands have three major types of cells namely. 1. Mucous neck cells which secrete mucus. 2 peptic or chief cells which secrete the proenzyme pepicinogen. 3. Parietal or oxyntic cells which secrete the HCL and intrinsic factors which is essential for absorption of vitamin B12. The stomach stores food for 4 to 5 hours. 
The food mixes thoroughly with the acidic gastric juice of the stomach by the churning movements of its muscular wall and is called the chyme. The proenzyme pepsinogen, on exposure to hydrochloric acid gets converted into the active enzyme pepsin, the proteolytic enzyme of the stomach. Pepsin converts protein into proteases and peptones. The mucus and bicarbonates present in the gastric juice plays an important role in lubrication and protection of the mucosal epithelium from excoriation by the highly concentrated hydrochloric acid. HCl provides the acidic pH 1.8 optimal for pepsins. Renin is a proteolytic enzyme found in gastric juice of infants which help in the digestion of milk proteins. Small amount of lipases are also secreted by the gastric glands. Movements that aid generated by the muscularous layer of small intestine helps in the thorough mixing of food with the various secretions in the intestine and thereby facilitate digestion. The secretions released into the small intestine are 1. Bile 2. Pancreatic juice 3. Intestinal juice Pancreatic juice and bile are released through hepato, pancreatic duct. The pancreatic juice contains inactive enzyme. Trypsinogen Chymotrypsinogen Procarboxypeptidases Amylases Lipases and Nucleases Trypsinogen is activated by an enzyme, enterokinase, secreted by the intestinal mucosa into active trypsin, which in turn activates the other enzymes in the pancreatic juice. The bile released into the duodenum contains bile pigments bilirubin and biliverdin, bile salts, cholesterol, and phospholipids but no enzymes. Bile helps in emulsification of fats that is breaking down of fats into very small micelles. Bile also activates lipases. The intestinal mucosal epithelium has goblet cells which secrete mucus. The secretion of brush border cells of mucosa and goblet cells constitute the intestinal juice or succus entericus. This juice contains a variety of enzymes like disaccharidases, dipeptidases, lipases, nucleosidases etc. The mucus along with the bicarbonates from the pancreas protects the intestinal mucosa from acid as well as provide an alkaline medium pH 7.8 for enzymatic activities. Submucosal glands also help in it. Proteins, proteases, and peptones which are partially hydrolysed proteins in the chyme reaching the intestine are acted upon by the proteolytic enzymes of pancreatic juice. Carbohydrates in the chyme are hydrolysed by pancreatic amylase into disaccharides. Fats are broken down by lipases with the help of bile into D and monoglycerides. Nucleases in the pancreatic juice acts on nucleic acids to form nucleotides and nucleosides. The enzymes in the succus entericus act on the end products of the reactions to form the respective simple absorbable forms. The breakdown of biomacromolecules occurs in the duodenum region of small intestine. The simple substances thus formed are absorbed in the jejunum and ileum regions of small intestine. The functions of large intestine are 1. Absorption of some water, minerals, and certain drugs. 2. Secretion of mucus. The undigested and unabsorbed substances called faces enters into cecum through ileocecal valve which prevents the backflow of the fecal matter. It is temporary stored in rectum till defecation. The activities of gastrointestinal tract are under neural and hormonal control. Gastric and intestinal secretion are stimulated by neural signals. Hormonal control of secretion of digestive juices is by local hormones. Absorption of digested products. Absorption is the process by which the end products of digestion pass through the intestinal mucosa into the blood or lymph. It is carried out by passive, active, or facilitated transport mechanism. Small amounts of monosaccharides like glucose, amino acids, and some of electrolytes like chloride ions are absorbed by simple diffusion. It depends upon the concentration gradient. Fructose and some amino acids are absorbed with the help of the carrier ions like Na plus by facilitated transport. Transport of water depends upon the osmotic gradient. Amino acids, monosaccharides like glucose, electrolytes like Na plus are absorbed into the blood by active transport. 
Fatty acids and glycerol being insoluble, cannot be absorbed into the blood. They are first incorporated into small droplets called micelles which move into the intestinal mucosa. They are reformed into very small protein-coated fat globules called the chylomicrons which are transported into the lacteal in the villi. These lacteal ultimately release the absorbed substances into the bloodstream. Absorption takes place in different parts of alimentary canal like 1. Mouth Certain drugs coming in contact with mucosa of mouth and lower side of the tongue are absorbed into the blood capillaries lining them. 2. Stomach Absorption of water, simple sugars and alcohol etc. takes place. 3. Small intestine Principal organ for absorption of nutrients. The digestion is completed here and the final product of digestion such as glucose, fructose, fatty acids, glycerol and amino acid are absorbed through the mucosa into the bloodstream and the lymph. 4. Large intestine. Absorption of water, some minerals, and drugs takes place. The absorbed substances finally reaches the tissue which utilize them for their activities. This process is called assimilation. The digestive waste, solidified into coherent faces in the rectum initiate a neural reflex causing an urge or desire for its removal. The ingestion of faces to the outside through the anal opening is called the defecation. It is a voluntary process and is carried out by a mass peristaltic movement. Disorders of digestive system The inflammation of intestinal tract is the most common ailment due to bacterial or viral infections. The infections are also caused by the parasites of the intestine like tapeworm, roundworm, threadworm, hookworm, pinworm etc. Here are five of the most common disorders of digestive system. 1. Jaundice. The liver affected, skin and eyes turn yellow due to the deposit of bile pigments. 2. Vomiting. It is the ejection of stomach contents through the mouth. This reflex action is controlled by the vomit center in the medulla. A feeling of nausea precedes vomiting. 3. Diarrhea. The abnormal frequency of bowel movement and increased liquidity of fecal discharge is known as diarrhea. It reduces the absorption of food. 4. Constipation. In constipation, the faces are retained within the rectum as the bowel movements occur irregularly. 5. Indigestion. In this condition the food is not properly digested leading to a feeling of fullness. The causes of indigestion are inadequate enzyme secretion, anxiety, food poisoning overeating and spicy food. If you find this video helpful, like, share, and subscribe my channel for more videos and expecting your reviews in comment section.